In this video, I'm going to show you the features we have here with regression modeling. So I'm back on the main workspace page. If you're currently in a model like this, just go back and you'll get to the main workspace. And instead of clicking on PLSEM, I'm going to click on regression. I'll just name this regression YouTube and select the data set you want. I'm going to use this one. It has some factor scores in it that I'll find useful. And this is what you get in regression models. This is going to be a basic, simple linear regression with one dependent variable and multiple predictors. So I'll make my dependent variable burnout for management. Just drag that out there, make it a little bigger. Whoop. Okay. And then I'm going to hold control while I click on the independent variables. So ethical concerns, management and fairness, resource demand gap, unsupported boss. I've held control while I clicked on those. And now I would drag them out, not to the white area, but directly to the dependent variable to imply regression. It will reorganize everything. I like my predictors on the left. Gonna make them a little bigger. And then I'm going to move it all up here and zoom in a bit. There we go. So here is my simple linear regression model. One dependent variable, multiple predictors, and an intercept. Residuals aren't shown, but they are implied and they are estimated. Next thing we do, hit calculate. There's only one option, that is regression analysis. Select that. You can choose between two-tailed and one-tailed. I'll keep it at two-tailed. You can change the significance level and mess with the standard errors. I will keep standard errors as they are. Start calculation. And then the estimates will show up. These are the standardized regression weights. You can change that over here to include the p-values. That's kind of nice. Or you can make it unstandardized. You can also show relative strength of predictors. And on the dependent variable, you can show the r-squared or r-squared adjusted or the Durbin-Watson test. But I'll just keep the r-squared. OK, what you want to do is go to report. And you can see the summary coefficients right here, including their p-values and confidence intervals. And you can see collinearity diagnostics here with the VIFs. We want these less than 3.3. You can see the summary ANOVA table, which tells you whether these all together are good predictors of the dependent variable. And you can even examine things like homoscedasticity. If you go to the residuals and look at the QQ plot, we want that to be a fairly normal straight line. This perfect line is normal, and this is the residuals plotted against that normal, so these are fairly normal. You just don't want a curve in here. And you can see that on a histogram as well. So the normal shadow is plotted, and then the bars are our observed residuals. We want them to follow that normal shadow pretty well, and they do. You can also look at the predicted values versus actual values. For this plot, you want these dots to more or less gather around a straight diagonal line, something like this. And these ones do. They could be tighter, but they're not super loose. It's not a foggy cloud. Similar with your predicted versus residuals, you want these dots to crowd around the line of zero right here, implying zero error. The further they are away from it, the worse. But you can see this scale on the y-axis is going to be custom to every model. You want these numbers to be small. So we can see that we have a fairly normal homoscedastic model. And that's about it for the regression model. Pretty straightforward.